Today I'll talk about three popular methods on dealing with height maps. So we're just gonna jump right into Blender. Gonna add a plane real quick, add a material. Then we're just gonna open up the shader editor. I'm gonna add an image texture node real quick. I'm gonna import my downloaded uh, Albedo texture. So what I got from textures.com actually was just a standard seamless um, scanned material of some rocks. So I also downloaded the height map. One thing to note is um, a height map is also known as a displacement map and also known as a bump map. They're all pretty much the same. Only the way you use them will determine the name, but the image itself itself won't say much about if it's a displacement map, a bump map, or a height map. It's more how you use the map that determines the name and usage. So it's more a render mode than a type of image. And what all these images have in common is that they aren't purple like normal maps. They are actually black and white. So the low parts of the material are black and the high parts of the material are white. So that's pretty much a height map or bump map or displacement map, depending on how you will use this map. So I imported my height map. So you can see it's a nice black and white faded map. One thing that's still missing is of course the bump node. And also we don't just drop in the bump node. We have to replug the plug into the height input of the bump node. So now you see this doesn't look too bad. The main downside is that from an angle, it's gonna still look flat. It's not actually changing the bump of the plane. So it's really just a bump map manipulating the normals, but on a pixel base, if that makes sense. So you would think this is a bad method. This is actually a very good method and used in games like all the time. So the main benefit of using this method is performance. So this is the most performant and most efficient way of dealing with height maps, or in this case, a bump map. So, but if you wanna actually have bumps in the mesh, we're gonna use a displacement modifier. So this is the second method you could use. So we're just gonna add a displacement modifier real quick, drop it on. We are gonna add a texture, go into the texture properties, add our height map. Go back to the modifiers. Uh, we're gonna add a subdivision, turn it to simple, put it over the displacement and just tessellate the plane. And now you can see this doesn't look too bad. The main issue here or downside is that you're dependent on the tessellation of the mesh. And in a lot of cases, you can't just tessellate the mesh until you have like millions of triangles. So this sometimes can be used and sometimes can't be used. It depends on your scene at the end. So. Now I'm gonna just hop over to the third and in my opinion, best method. Um, so we're just gonna hook up our uh, bump map or height map or displacement map into the displacement input of the material output. We're gonna throw in a displacement node in between. So just hook it up to the height input of the displacement nodes. What we have to do now is hop over to the experimental feature set. Then we're gonna go to the modifiers. We're gonna add another subdivision modifier, turn on simple, turn on adaptive render mode. This is very important. Then we're gonna go to the material, uh, go all the way down to settings, turn on displacement and bumps. So once you've done that, um, you see it already looks very good. So I'm just gonna tweak the settings real quick here. So this actually has the best visual quality and really is the best way you can deal with height maps. Um, you can even change the resolution on the subdivision section in the render settings. And then basically it looks perfect. And it doesn't only look perfect, this is perfect and really has perfect results uh, since it's on a pixel base. And now you're wondering why not always use this technique. So the biggest, uh, and it is a very big downside. So the biggest downside of this method is that your VRAM will just fill up. So if you have a few of these images in high resolution, 8K or even 16K, and you've just got one GPU, your VRAM will just uh, fill up and you can't render anymore. So that's pretty much um, just one downside, but a very big downside. And that's why normal bump maps, like in the bump input of the principal shader or the normal input of the principal shader still exist because this technique just kills every PC. So it's the v most visual stunning um, method, but your PC will just cry and die. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope you learned of at least one new method here on how to deal with height maps. So that's it for today and goodbye.